On this video, I'll be using a trial version of the software for demonstration purposes, which will differ very slightly from the version you'll see in your course. Some of the content is a little different and the number of topics in the trial is 307, while in your course only contains 160 topics. Additionally, I'll skip some steps in the demo that you can't or shouldn't. For instance, you will not be able to fast forward in the actual usage of this but I will fast forward occasionally in, in this demonstration. When you first log in, Alex will give you a tutorial on how to use the program. Pay close attention to how this works. This will be important as you're using the, the software program over the course of the rest of the semester. Some of these things aren't too difficult and may even seem relatively straightforward, which is good. And other things will not seem as straightforward and you may want to take notes on them while you're doing the tutorial so that you can remember what these things are for. The help button will always be there to help you look at things. Some of the things are not quite so obvious, such as the graphing of lines and that sort of thing. I'll mention that the design of Alex is actually to replicate how you would do these things by hand. This is very similar to exactly the process you would do, use to draw a line using a ruler by hand. And that's, that's the idea behind that. Note that a calculator is available for certain problems on Alex. You should see this calculator button which is now available here, whereas the dictionary is not. The calculator button will be available when you can use it. The calculator that's internal to the Alex program, that is this button right here, is the only calculator you're able to use in the lab. And I would recommend that you try to work through problems at home also without a calculator. And this is how this calculator works using the keyboard type 31. Do what it says. You'll also have occasionally have often options for help. And I'll click there, and it'll show me help on certain things. Some things are a little more involved, such as how do I draw a graph. If you see this quick help button, follow the instructions, for, and it'll show you help on whatever it is that you're currently working on. And again, here, this is the trial version. Normally, you won't be able to fast forward. But here is what the initial assessment will look like. After the tutorial, you'll immediately be given an initial assessment. This is a very important diagnostic tool, and it's Alex's attempt to gauge what level of the material you currently know. It will form the basis for where you start in Alex, and it's very important that you carefully answer the, the problems and work diligently. The instructions below will match very similarly to the instructions you'll see, with the exception of the top part, which is for this demonstration. So, for instance, these this these bold instructions you will need to read through and, t and pay close attention to. Again, in the demonstration, some of these topics may not look exactly like you'll see on your exam, but they'll be very, very similar. Typically, you're going to want to work through these by hand and then put the answers down here on the bottom. You should notice there is an I don't know button uh, as an option. Use it when you are not able to make good progress on a problem. Alex uses an adaptive type of artificial intelligence and it works best when you use the I don't know button when you don't know how to do something and when you attempt to work through a problem that you think you can make an honest attempt at. So for instance, I think this answer should be 24. So I'll hit next. Notice on this problem I have a calculator, but it doesn't matter. I don't want to do this problem. So I'm, and I'm going to click I don't know with this expression. It may, some, it may look something like negative 11y minus 5u or something like that. And again, on the demonstration, this will look a little different than it would on your version. Let's just 
click I don't know on this. I really don't know. Now for the for this again demonstration version, I can fast forward to the end and it'll give me a couple options for what this should look like, and then I'll move on to the pie chart. Once you've completed the initial assessment, Alex will determine in your course how many of the 160 topics you have de demonstrated knowledge of. Again, in this demonstration, there are 307 topics in your course, there will be 160. It will display a pie chart with topics that remain to be learned. The chart is organized into sections, and you can see that there are seven sections in this course. Of the sections in the demonstration, radicals and quadratic equations contains 52 topics. If your initial assessment indicates that you're adept at 10 of these topics, mine currently says zero, let's go over to graphs of linear functions. It says that I'm adept at two of the 36 functions. All right, I'm gonna have to go through the demonstration. This is my Alex Pi. It shows that I know 222 of the 307 topics. The Pi is this broken into seven pieces. And it's describing to me how this pie works. The light part of the pie slice shows what you have left to learn, and the dark part shows what you already have, have demonstrated knowledge of. Okay, so if I click on this, I can click on these topics to learn what they are, and this is how you will work through Alex in learning mode. You'll go to your pie and work on completing your pie pieces. That's typically what we'll call it because of the pie. So if I click here, I can click on a topic to learn. Let's stick with this. Um, let's not do that. Let's do absolute value of a number. All right, so I have some options here. I can click on explain, which will, as you might exa guess, explain how to do this. I can enter an answer and click next, or I can go back to my pie to, to select a different po topic. Since I think I know how to do this, I will enter my answers, 11 and five using the keyboard. Click Next. That worked pretty well. And it demonstrates that I did this correctly and tells me that I did it correctly. If you answer correctly without help one more time, it'll add a problem to your pie. Let's see that happen. 15, 11, Next. Looks good. If I wanted to continue with some more problems here, I could hit more practice. Since I feel that I know this topic pretty well, I'll just click Done. And I've got another pie piece on my chart. Let's go to another topic. Let's do operations with absolute value. Well, this is a little more involved. Well, that's three minus a negative four. Let's put a negative one in here and see what happens. Hmm, it doesn't like that. Let's try two. It tells me it's wrong. If I need help, let's click explain. We'll try that. And it tells me how I could have gone through and actually done this problem. So it explains this. It has some other ideas for me to do. All right, let's practice some more. All right, this one I'll try. One minus 12 is a negative 11. Good. Since I got it wrong the first time, it tells me if you answer correctly without help three more times, I'll add a problem to your pie. That is, when I get things wrong, Alex is gonna expect me to work harder on learning them. So let's try a couple more of these. It should be four. Again, I only got two more times to go. All right, got that one right. Hmm. hmm. Let's try that again. Hmm. Didn't quite get that one right. All right, so the correct answer should have been seven, and it's telling me that after I, I missed it a few times in a row. Still got to keep working at this before I can get my pie piece. There we go. Now, when you miss things again, it's gonna ask you to do it more often. And this is how the program expects you to work through things to learn them. Um, by repeatedly doing things until you can do it correctly several times in a row, Alex is helping you to learn the material. If you run into a topic where you continue to work on it, you hit the explain button and you're still unable to get something write down the name of the topic and bring that with you to the lab section meeting next time so that you're able to ask your tutor about it. And at the beginning of the lab, make sure that you bring out those topics and you're asking your, uh, not your tutor, your, your lab instructor about that. That's one of the best ways to make appropriate use of the course. In addition to your pie, 
which shows you the number of topics. In this case, I've now gotten through 24 of the 307 topics in the demonstration. Again, there's only 160 topics in your course. I can also see a report. This might be a little off your, uh, let me move the video screen up just a little bit so you can see this. You can click on a report right here, and the report option shows you a slightly different view of what's going on. It'll show you the topics that you've gotten correct, either on an assessment that you've already taken or in working on learning mode while working on completing Pi pieces, what you're ready to learn. So one thing to notice about the Pi is, though there are supposed to be 87 topics here, it's only I only know 22 of them. If I scroll down through there, it's not showing me all 87 topics. Alex will only let you work on the topics it thinks you're ready for. That is, based on what you've shown that you know, it will give you more topics to work on now. It will not let you work on topics it does not think you're prepared for. So scrolling down here, the very bottom here on the history, what you're going to do in this course is you're going to take an initial assessment, and it's showing up here in blue, and then you're going to work in learning mode. And that number seven here is representing that you, that I completed 7% of the topics in this demonstration course in the initial assessment, or thought I, I would be able to. And I've completed 1% of the topics so far while working on the Pi. If I continued working on this 1%, this plus 1% might get up to 10 or 15%. And as you're working through that in the course, we're going to call that working towards your benchmark goals. When I came into the lab during a week when there was a comprehensive assessment, if I took that assess assessment, it would have another assessment listed here. And I'll show you what that will look like in just a second with some actual with some actual student data. Um, and it will show me these, these values and what they look like over time. As you continue to work in Alex, your assessment may begin to look like this. You'll come in and take your initial assessment, and then you'll work on Alex for a while. This student, when they initially took the assessment, it showed that they only demonstrated knowledge of 1% of the topics. This is num the number right here in blue. And they, they initially worked and continued to work on 13%. Then Alex actually gave them what's called a progress assessment. Occasionally, some of you will have progress assessments come up while you're working and it's not a normal comprehensive assessment time in, in the lab. This may be kind of during homework or it may be in, in the lab on a week when you don't have a comprehensive assessment. But this is an assessment very similar to the initial assessment that's going to gauge your progress from where you started to where you are now. Um, sometimes you may see that, that the, your scores lower a little bit um, or as you progress through here. But let's kind of walk through the progress of this student. She, she came in and initially uh, demonstrated knowledge of 1% of the topics. Her next progress assessment showed 6. She continued working. Her next progress assessment showed 16%. She continued working. Her next progress assessment showed 28%. Much, much higher than she'd been a few weeks ago. Continued working. 38% continued working. 49% continued working. 69%. 71%. And then she had a little drop-off, and that's fairly normal that sometimes... Uh, you'll work for a while and then show a slight drop off. This can be for a variety of reasons. You can have a bad day. This this can show up in your exams. You uh, There could have been some topics you were confused about that you really didn't learn as well as you'd expected. It's Any one test may be a poor measure of your overall learning, but you'll notice this person went from demonstrating knowledge on 71% of the topics to 58, worked a little harder, then went right back up to 71% when given another assessment. This is not abnormal. Um, this is a fairly consistent, this is a fairly normal thing for a lot of students when they're working through Alex or really any other class. Um, and one of the reasons we designed the course the way that we did with so many assessments is to give people the opportunity on assessments to quickly get back up to where they would have been before. And that's how you want to look at this. When you're working in learning mode, you want to carefully work through learning the topics and you want to make sure that when you take the assessments, you take them seriously, whether they're a progress assessment at home or a comprehensive assessment in the lab on a requested date. Um, but this is what your progress report will look like more as you've worked through the course.